Hi, welcome to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name is Ted Zeppelin. And this week, unfortunately, we did not have a house to clean. However, that kind of worked out in my favor because I had a whole bunch of stuff around my house that desperately needed done. And we've been working so much lately that I just haven't had the time to do it until now. Now, the first thing you're gonna see in this video is not a necessity by any means, or it's a necessity that I created for myself because somebody started collecting records. About half a year ago, I got got a 1982 Technics record player with the EQ and the amp and everything that went with it because I wanted something from my childhood that was really cool but I never really learned to appreciate back then and that's one of them as a, as a cool stereo system from the 80s. After that I started getting some records here and there and then if any of you have my specific flavor of autism then you're aware of the curse of not just getting into a hobby but really getting into a hobby. Like I could didn't just pick up a guitar and learn how to play it. I instead learned how to play it and then learned like 300 songs. As a kid, I didn't just color or just draw. I had to learn how to do photographic charcoal drawings and it drove me nuts if it wasn't perfect in my eyes. Many decades ago, I got into playing Magic the Gathering, but I couldn't just stop at having a deck or two. I collected something like 300,000 cards. I blow up everything that I do. I go way overboard and I'm aware that I do that. That. Now the downside is that records are an expensive hobby and they're a heavy hobby. I forgot how much records weigh until you're carrying a stack of them. The upside is that there is an incredible community of record loving people who usually have eclectic tastes in music and they're all super supportive. But those supportive people also enable my insanity. So now I've got a whole bunch of records that were just sitting around in stacks. So I bought this little record shelf off of Amazon and that's what I'm doing here putting that together and you'll be able to see my record collection here in a few. This whole video is not about records. This is about what I've done over the course of like three or four days this week. I did this then I put together a massive toolbox. Jason and I cleaned my kitchen. We moved a really crazy paludarium that I've had for like five years. You'll see what that is later. We just did tons and tons of stuff around the house that's been needing done for a really long time. Now there are two things we're going to be doing in a later video. We have to pull up a whole bunch of carpet because I'm getting ready to have my floors redone and I'm going to be replacing the backsplash in my kitchen and I wanted to do those for this video but we did so much over the course of just two days that we were physically exhausted and I didn't have any more energy to do that stuff so suck it but for those of you who love to see cleaning and organizing there is some of that in this video as well I mean we had to clean the kitchen in order to do virtually anything because it was a disaster and this area that I'm in right now as well as the entrance area to our house gets rearranged pretty dramatically. You'll see that a little bit later in the video. So be patient, mom. Mom, for those of you who aren't members, but who watch the channel regularly, I don't know if we've announced it on the main channel or not, but if not, you're going to hear it now. Jason is going to be a father for the very first time, which is going to make me a grandfather, which sounds super weird to say out loud, but also super cool and exciting, so I can't wait. The baby is actually due on Emily's birthday, which is in October, so fingers crossed that that happens so we can just double up on birthdays. What that also means is that at some point in the very, very near future, we're going to be revamping Jason's house. We're going to be taking down the old crappy walls, putting up new drywall, taking up all that nasty carpet and putting up vinyl plank flooring, replacing his sinks, his bathtubs, and fixing a whole bunch of minor plumbing problems that's needed fixed for a while but has never been a necessity until now. Then we'll be painting and decorating and making a whole baby room. There will be a lot of DIY in that that set of videos and trust me there will be some cleaning in those too because one every house needs clean to some extent but two whenever I get into DIY I make a freaking mess son so yeah can't wait to start that that's going to be a fun project
And here come the records. I did a lot of these slow so that you can see the actual name of the album. So I won't go through all these, but there are a couple of them that off camera, I, I thought I was showing them to the camera, but they got kind of cockeyed. So I'll kind of point those out as they, uh, as they pop up. But you can see my tastes are mostly grunge metal mixed with some like soft stuff like Dave Matthews, a few soundtracks here and there, Alanis Morissette and Bush. You'll see a lot of stuff from the, that grunge era and then it'll be mixed with things like James Taylor um, all the ones on the right are Emily's and all the ones on the left are mine and I started out with basically all the Incubus albums that I could find in one record store I just bought all those for her but a lot of hers on her side are bands I've never heard of before she's super into indie stuff and she's into older stuff whereas I'm not really the irony is that there's a whole bunch of these albums I'll never take out of the cellophane I just wanted them so there's two albums by Skid Row that's really good. I've got three Primus albums that are great. All the Pearl Jam albums. I'm really into the Lonely Island so I'm trying to make a get all their albums but those are kind of hard to get certain ones at least. I'm also super into REM which is funny because you'll see me put place in like all the REM albums and then some Pantera. So my music kind of I don't know it's got a pretty wide spectrum of what I like. As we get down to this second area here, I'm gonna kinda call those out. There's Steely Dan's Aja, Gin Blossoms. Then I go to Stone Temple Pilots, uh, their first and second album. Then Pink Floyd's The Wall. I think it's the best Pink Floyd ever made. Matchbox 20, Dinosaur Jr. They've only got a few songs I like, but I, I, I don't know, they're, they're awesome. Offspring. Journey's Greatest Hits, because you don't have a record collection if you don't have that. Alice in Chains' Dirt, I will have all theirs uh, soon. Corn, the black one is Mad Season. That's Alice in Chains and Screaming Trees and a few different bands together. Eagles' Greatest Hits. Faith No More's Angel Dust, which I think is the greatest album ever written. Nirvana. 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 There's some Nirvana. Oh, hey, look, more Nirvana. We got Pantera, two of my favorite albums. Our Lady Peace. They were big in Canada, but they're an excellent band. Uh, that's Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, followed by Siamese Dream and Gish. And then two REM albums to go with all the other REMs that I had on the top shelf. I did go through here and alphabetize all these except for Emily's. I just didn't show that on camera because alphabetizing records isn't exactly packed with excitement. Yeah, anyway, we're getting off records here in just a second, then we'll jump into the next big thing. Also, if you get bored at some point, jump into the comments and let me know your most underrated band. Every time I ask that question from my friends, they'll say some band that I totally forgot even existed, and they'll turn out to be one one of my favorite bands from back in the day and it jogs my memory enough to where I can go out and find those albums track those down so not just your favorite band who do you think is the most underrated one I think for me it would either be Marvelous 3 or Our Lady Peace or Everclear. All three are great bands, all three have incredible songs, but I don't think they ever got the full respect that they deserved as musicians. If you don't agree with that, you can just shut your face. I'm not putting up with opinions, I'm not putting up with it. Okay, so I have some explaining to do. In the back of this truck is a gigantic toolbox or a tool chest. It's actually the bottom half to one because I already have the top. And there is a gigantic 85 inch TV. And there's a reason I have this massive, ridiculous TV back here. And in no way is my explanation going to justify it. We have TVs in most of our rooms. Even though I don't watch a lot of TV, I mostly just watch YouTube on TV. I normally do that in my bedroom. My bedroom has like a 55 inch or 52 inch TV in it, which under any normal circumstances is a perfectly fine size for a TV. However, my bedroom is really long. And so that TV is difficult for 
for me to see from across the room. I needed something that took up a lot more of my field of vision. The TV that we have in our living room is gigantic. It's like a 78 inch TV and it is way more than enough for any room, way more than any human needs. So what I figured I'd do was get a slightly bigger TV for the living room, then take the 78 inch TV from the living room and put it in the bedroom, then take the 52 inch that is in the bedroom and put it in the guest room, then take the 48 inch that was in the guest room and put it out in my garage so that whenever I'm working on a car or working on some project, I could put on YouTube videos or whatever. That is the most first world thing I think I've ever said. My sincerest apologies to people who get seething white hot anger whenever they see somebody spending on something as ridiculous and frivolous as many multiple TVs. Also, there's another TV in Emily's craft room. Don't hit me. If it makes you feel any better, we recently did a house over the course of a month where we spent $3,000 of our own money on a complete stranger to make their lives easier. I may or may not be saying that to avoid my own guilt over having that many TVs. I mean, there's like enough to where you could display a tarot card on each one, shuffle my TVs, and then read somebody's fortune with them. And if it's not the fortune you want, you just change the channel, son. Oh no, looks like somebody's hitting the lottery and having sex with a celebrity. Thank you, TV tarot cards. You're welcome, weird TV collector. Shut up, talking TV. Oh, stupid voices aside, we recorded everything that we did with these TVs to show us taking them out of one room and putting them into another to do the TV swap, except for the most important one, which was the brand new one. So instead, I got a picture of me standing in front of it. For those who don't know, I'm six foot four. Usually your wingspan is about the same as your height. So my wingspan, I think, is right around six foot five or something like that. So this ridiculous abomination of a TV is about six and a half feet wide. There is no way that I could watch Game of Thrones on that because the dongs would be huge. For those of you who watch the channel regularly, you'll know that not too long ago I cleaned out my whole garage and got rid of like half a dumpster worth of boxes. You'll see that we're quickly adding to that, but I'm actually staying ahead of it this time and taking those to the dump. So Jason's going to break all those down and then I want to pull the car out so that we can bring in this gigantic tool chest thing. That is something I've needed for a while because I do a ton of DIY and I fix a lot of things around my house and I also use these tools to fix other people's houses for the videos that you see on the channel. I'm about to say something kind of out of place and weird here. I think it's important for everyone to have a goal that's way over the horizon and seems out of reach except make it something that is actually attainable but is really really hard to attain. It could be a thing or it could be the love of your life. Something that takes you a long time to work toward even if you think it's not possible to get it. I'm saying that because you're about to see me get in my car and pull it back. That car was my lifelong dream that I've had since I was a little kid and I've been chipping away at that dream for almost 50 years. I told my wife when we first got together that one of my lifelong goals was to get a really nice car like some sort of sports car or muscle car before age 50. Last summer I was 49 and I finally made that dream come true. So that car to me doesn't represent like the money that we put into it. That car to me represents half a century worth of work. And I think it's important and healthy psychologically to have some big grandiose sort of thing that you're aiming for, but something that takes a lot of time to chip away at. Because to me, the journey to that object or to that emotional state or to that relationship builds your character even if you never arrive at that goal. It represents stamina and endurance, but most of all, patience. I grew up extremely poor. So even though that car may seem goofy and frivolous to a lot of people, to me, it means I'm worthy of escaping that life. It represents achievement and pride and this kind of almost surreal sense of accomplishment. It also represents that if we lined up side by side, I would drop you in the quarter mile before you even hit second gear, son. 6.2 liter V8. What, what? I, I am so so sorry for that. I did not mean, I, I didn't say anything. You
It always makes me laugh to see products that are mostly marketed at guys. I mean, I know there's a lot of women who buy stuff like this, but uh, honestly, it's mostly marketed toward guys. And they always have these weirdly, overly hyper masculine names. So this toolbox is made by Master Force. You get like chainsaws that are called like the Power Rip 5000, the Max Blaster Power Wash. So you walk down the aisles at like a Home Depot or a Menard and every single item in every aisle sounds like it was named by a 14 year old. Honey, do we have enough money in the bank account so I can pick up this dong rock jackhammer? I need it to redo the driveway. So yeah, anyway, this tool chest is actually called Master Force. And yes, I did actually need it. And yes, they did have one size bigger, but I controlled myself. I am secure, though I'm probably gonna paint flames down the side of it at one point. But I mean, you can see how big that thing is. We're putting it together by my rider or my power deck. Deck thrash mower. All right, all right, I'll stop now. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna let you guys enjoy the sounds of organizing tools. When we're done with this, we're gonna start on the interior of the house. And so you'll finally get to see some cleaning and organizing, like more so than what you've seen now. I mean, you've seen a lot of organizing up until now, but my kitchen desperately needs it. And my entryway and that record area is so cluttered that it makes the room feel half the size. So I'm gonna take care of that on film, baby. You are welcome, we'll see you then.
I would also like to apologize for this picture. I did not mean to make that face. That's just how I am. So let's head on into the kitchen. Now, admittedly, this is not as bad as how you've seen it in the past. It's still pretty bad. There's stuff all over the place, but Jason was on his way over, so I decided to do a little bit of cleanup before he got there. I was also doing a live stream for Team Filth. Team Filth is the top level of my members only area. It's got an insane price put on it, but that was actually asked of me. And so rather than just have Having them pay that money for no reason. They just wanted a way to, to financially support the channel in a bigger way than what the other memberships cost. Instead of just letting them do that, I try to give something extra. So whenever we're doing a clean out like this, when I've got signal on my phone, I will live stream that in real time to them. So while I was doing this, I was also live streaming this and stopping to talk to people and making stupid dad jokes and whatnot. That member section actually has three tiers. Uh, the bottom tier gets you access to discord the middle tier gets you discord and also an extra video every week and then the top tier gets you the additional live stream that's just whenever my phone has signal remember i work in the country a lot so there are times where i don't have any signal at all but as always do not become a member if you can't afford it i don't want people paying me money for something that's not extremely spectacular to begin with it's just a way to support the channel if you can afford it it's not a big deal both Jason and I are doing absolutely fine financially. We don't need that by any means. It's just a fun little extra that we do. Seriously, the easiest thing you can do that's totally free to help the channel is subscribe. We are nearing half a million subscribers and at 1 million we get a gold plaque. The one personal thing that I want from this channel is the gold plaque. I have the silver one that we got at 100,000, but I really want that 1 million subscriber plaque. It's just another one of those things that I talked about about earlier, that unattainable over the horizon goal. That's something I've been chipping away at for about a year and a half now, and it's starting to finally look like it may be something we can actually achieve. But to do that, just hit subscribe and then feel good knowing that you're helping some dude's weird dream come true. So this is the paludarium. A paludarium is like a terrarium, except with a water feature. That's the only difference between the two. Usually a paludarium has a landmass and a water feature that has sort of like a shoreline. I've got that and then I've got a small little waterfall that I built into it. This thing is so self-sustaining that I haven't fertilized it in four years. It's been going for at least five years and the only thing I do to it is, is add some water every once in a while when it goes through evaporation. However, this has been sitting in this same spot for four or five years and I want it moved because it's just sitting in this area and cluttering things up and making the room feel smaller. So I'm going to empty out the water, take all the heavy stuff out like there's some massive rocks in there, and then I'm going to have Jason help me bring that up to my office. In doing that, it helps me find a new place for that giant plant to the bottom left that's called a ZZ plant. Then it also means I can take the cat tree that's clogging up my living room and move it over toward the door, which gets more sunlight. The cats like the sunlight even more than they like the cat tree, so I figured I'd combine them in the same area and give them like twice the enjoyment. So to do all that, we're going to clear out this entire area and then carry that big mofo right on upstairs. But I think you'll be surprised at how different and how much more open it looks when we get that out of there, even whenever we move in the new cat tree into the new area by the door. It's pretty significant. Also, if you're wondering what I've cut down out of that, that's a pothos, and those things just grow forever. They get absolutely enormous. My pothos is about 30 feet long, so I cut it down and only left one big major vine that's got a whole bunch of leaf growth on it because those things grow so quickly that they will actually start growing right where I cut them. And my long-term goal with that plant is to get it so big that I can wrap the entire room with those vines, and, and I will be able to. It just takes a ton of patience. The name of that uh, purple plant originally was called Wandering Jew, but you can and see why that name would get a little weird nowadays. So they changed the name quite a while ago to Wondering Dude. It's also called an inch plant, but those things, once they get established, grow like crazy. I've actually pulled out all of my previous bunches of those, and like six months later, they were all back. Just having even the slightest shred of a root in the soil, they, they will grow right out of that. But they're absolutely beautiful plants. They're purple and silver and green. They've got a tricolor, and they're 
they also look kind of metallic. So whenever you walk around them, there will be a shine that comes off of them. I like to put that into paludariums or terrariums to break up the green and add like a huge punch of color to, to any enclosure that has a lot of plants. It's really good at breaking up the green masses. Now, when we picked this up, this paludarium, I was carrying the entire weight of this myself, but I let Jason pretend to be carrying his side because otherwise he'd be embarrassed. Like he was afraid you'd all think that he was weak and you'd be right. But just between me and you, like that was all me. He could have just walked away while I was carrying that and it would have stayed in that same position like he wasn't even there. But we moved that from, um, we had to move it up a flight of stairs. So it was not light. And then once we got that out of the way, it opened up this whole area which hasn't been cleaned in like five years. I mean, the, the main part of the floor obviously has been cleaned, but nothing under it, nothing behind it. All that area with the big giant plants, it's just kind of closed off from the rest of the house. So we finally got a chance to get in there and vacuum it. You'll also notice that these carpets look absolutely terrible. They're old Berber carpets and they're really high quality carpets, but they've been around for many, many, many years. I was going to use my Bissell carpet cleaner on this and do a carpet cleaning video for you guys, but we're getting ready to replace all this carpet and all that cheap looking fake hardwood in the kitchen with porcelain tile that looks like marble. It's not the beveled tile, it's flat all the way across. It's super fancy looking, but we're actually getting ready to do that fairly soon. So I'm not bothering cleaning a carpet that's just gonna be ripped out. In fact, I'm gonna make it more dirty before they take it out of there. Just come in with big piles of dirt, big shovels full of dirt, and then grind them in with my feet maybe take a big crap on the floor. It's my house. I do what I want. I do what I want. So the funny thing leading up to this is that we had to take out two gigantic white oak trees that were as old as the town itself. One of them had dropped a massive branch on my wife's brand new car. She hadn't even had it two weeks and shattered the windshield, dented a bunch of panels. They had to do a massive amount of work on it to get it fixed. But those trees had been a danger for a long time. They had what they call widow maker branches, which were branches that were dead and ready to fall off. If that had been somebody's pet or somebody's kid or just somebody, 
they walked underneath there when that fell off, they would have been dead. So we finally had to bite the bullet and as bad as we hated to take out really old, awesome trees like that, we had to have them cut down. And both of those trees had massive amounts of squirrels in them, like an infestation of squirrels. So the funny part to me is that from our cat's perspective, both those trees disappeared and then everything in that section of the house was also disappearing, including like their cat tree and the paludarium. And it looked like we were just throwing all of our stuff away or from the cat's perspective, like somebody was coming in and stealing all of our stuff. It was like the nothing and never ending story. The trees disappeared, then all the squirrels disappeared, then the paludarium plants, they, it just everything kept disappearing to them. So they were all looking at us like, what? in the hell are you doing? But I don't answer to talking cats. So we just kept on working and they just kept staring, as cats do. Once we finished that area, we went back up into the office to completely set up the paludarium. I wanted to make sure we were completely done with that room first so that that had the paludarium had time to settle because whenever we moved it, we kicked up a whole bunch of sediment. The waterfall in that is a small 50 gallon per hour pump connected to a tube that goes through a set of rocks. I didn't want that pulling a whole bunch of sediment through the filter or through the water pump, even though I've got filter floss in it to help filter some of that out. So I started working on that, getting everything set up, and then hanging the vines around my windows. And then Jason was just running back and forth from the sink with a gallon jug each time. Then I would just pour in one gallon of water every time he came back up there. This whole thing only holds about five to seven gallons of water, so it didn't take that many trips. But if you try to dump in a five gallon bucket of water all at once, it just destroys the sediment and flings soil everywhere. You have to be doing this really gentle so you don't mess the whole thing up. The water looks cloudy at first but it only took about 30 minutes for it to become crystal clear again. So shut up. Don't be judging my water. Don't be judging my paludarium. How pallid dare you, um... After that, it was just back down to the kitchen to do some quick wrap ups. Then I told Jason to get the hell out of my house. Coming up this next week, I do have somebody who's asking for my help who's local and has a house that evidently is pretty trashed. I have a couple of people within an hour's drive who also need help. I'm gonna have to see about that one because if we're spending an hour on the road, then it means we're spending an hour coming back, which means that it's actually easier for us to get a hotel, which now means we're dipping into more money for 
for the cleanups. But anyway, that's that's all my problem. That's not your problem. But it does mean that we're pretty solid on having at least one house to do next week. And it should be like a traditional clean. It's actually been a while since we've had a true cleanup job on the channel because we've had so much stuff that's been DIY or organization, but not a lot of stuff that's just been outright dirty. So that should be coming up next week, hopefully. As always, thanks for watching. Members, I will see you this Wednesday. Everybody else, I'll see you next weekend. Later.